True View Podcast. A bunch of different views. <laughs> the boys keep it real, man. I really like listening to them, man. They funny. Yeah. Son. They really speak their truth. What the hell was that? <laughs> what it do what the business is was good it's your boy mail and we back in the building again bringing the barbershop to the box off well no not the box office today we bringing the barbershop to the ground y'all know we doing the damn thing today i feel like this is a barbershop to the barbershop to the barbershop but i'm here i'm jay Yo, yo, what's poppin', people? This is Zoe. We in the building for another one, and it's a different one today, man. Um, bringing y'all something fresh, something exclusive. Um, yeah, we we gonna dig into it. Yeah, once again, thanks again for tuning in to the True View Pod. This is grown man MJ, and this is something new. This is some. This is some new and kind of overdue. I think this is where we headed in the future. Let's get it, fellas. I like it. I love it. I needs more of it, man. So, what we covering? I don't know, Jay. You want to try and tackle it? You want me? Would you? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a big boy. Right? Okay. Okay. And I usually say I don't eat what I can't pronounce. The combination of W's and A's. And, and brethren, <laughs> like there's a. <laughs> he said, uh, I'm approaching it. I'm just, okay. So, Oladua. Oladua? Okay. Here we go. Or is it Oladua? Oladua? No, it's, it's Oladu. Oladu Equiano. Yeah, I feel like there's a rhythm to the dance. Like my dog. Yeah, okay. All right, homie. All right, so I'll do equiano. No boy. Yeah, homie. Cuz. Thanks. Joe. Why do she never mind? Uh, known for most of his life as Gustav Vasa, I feel like that's how you say it. Was a writer and a biographer. <laughs> <My bad. laughs> this is a real story, right? Like, was this someone's yeah. life? Yeah, really should not open up with laughter. I ain't doing right. no jokes. I ain't <laughs> <a man. laughs> <laughs> you know the whole yo i swear to god you definitely mama it was him ass like <laughs> i swear to, hey okay. he see okay he see. known uh mr equiano known for most of his life as gustav vasa who was a writer and an abol- ab- abol- abolitionist abolitionist it's wow. because i'm congested it's because i'm congested <laughs> Was a writer and abolitionist <laughs> from, according to his memoir, the Igbo region of the kingdom of Benin. Benin, Benin. Enslaved as a child in Africa, he was taken to the Caribbean and sold as a slave to the Royal Navy officer, to a Royal Navy officer. I really wish to learn which island that he was um, he was brought to. <laughs> But yeah, so that's a story. Um, it's being, and the reason why we're calling it a story is because it's being told through Instagram stories, right? Um, yes. Free of charge currently, or maybe they're getting paid on the back end. But I guess that's where we want to start off with how this was brought to our radar and cross our paths and why we must relive this trauma yet again. Uh, well, I never lived it the first time. No, I definitely didn't. Uh, but we've been reliving like these slave shows like forever. Be like, no, no, not like this, bro. All right, All right go ahead. Right, this is a different. This is a different spin it's on it. And, me and, that and I think me. I think what you what you didn't get to see in this, Jay, because 
to be transparent, we'll let the I, audience I know. I boycotted it. Yeah, you haven't watched the, watched yeah. it yet. Uh, it wasn't a yeah, long watch. It yeah, about, <laughs> well, maybe it was about what 35 40 minutes. All yeah, together? this was a that's mm-hmm. what my Uh, and it was set up. I think this is the whole com- This is a big part of the conversation. It was the brilliance of how it was presented to its audience, and it was done. Uh, with the help of the museum, so it meant to reach a younger generation. Mike, you said Mike, your mic, Mike, your mic. Something happened. Yeah, 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 there you go. There you go. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. All right, repeat that. Make sure everybody got that. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 help the the uh it was helped to be put out by a, a museum which is focused on reaching a, yes. a, a younger generation, Dusabo Museum in Chicago. Shout uh, out for that fact. Uh the the first African American hum- museum in this in the nation, uh Mr. Barack Obama. But anyway, uh So it's meant to hit a younger audience and mm. them taking the approach of putting it out on Instagram through its stories, I thought was a brilliant way of doing it. Uh, it's it's uh, it's on the platform that's already got a lot of traction grab and attention to it that is getting younger by the day. Uh, so I, I thought that was real smart. And the way it is shot with the, you know, use of a camera selfie camera and a smartphone feeds. camera yeah it's the live the live feeds and stuff. yeah off the yeah off the reels or whatever it's, it's hard i thought it was hard that went real hard man I, I, it caught me um i heard about it i heard uh they they're making their rounds on the on the radio and stuff so i, I decided to check it out and i liked it so much that i brought it and brought it to everybody here to for us to review it because it was it's a different take Number one, especially in the time where they're trying to, you know, push critical or erase critical race theory and all of that. And, you know, they want to act like all of this stuff never happened. I thought this was a very creative way to reach the young generation because, you know, our generation, yes, we know of this. Um, They're trying to. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mike. No, I just want to add in on that because that's a hell of a point you're making. Uh, how they trying to erase a lot of this history. They just had a, a female diver, a black female diver. Uh, she's discovered uh, several. She's documenting. I'm sorry. She's documenting other black divers who have discovered slave ships off the coast of several different oh, continents. Wow. No, nah, man, that's that's awesome. That's awesome, man. And it, you know, as I was saying, like with our generation, they're trying not to teach uh, so much of this. So they're like our children are getting it from us, but it's slowly trickling away. If they don't teach the new generation, it's just a matter of time before it, it erases. And, and yeah, shortly after we was what out of college, they was talking what uh, slaves or refugees and shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they cool. still I mean, they still they're or starting to acknowledge they're starting to acknowledge now that you know Columbus didn't discover America. <laughs> they, they stole this motherfucker. Like yeah. it, these are things that they have to they have to teach and show. And I thought this was a very creative way to do it because you're reaching the youth where they are. And as far as when I'm watching it and stuff, man, I, like I'm watching uh, the young man who played Equiano in this, and I see my son, I see my daughter as they're doing their uh dances tiktok dances live feeds and stuff man so like this hit me this hit me hard like i was like damn man like man and it it, with doing that it got me so much more invested in it uh than i would a normal movie because with normal movies i'm able to be like all right it's just a movie and stuff but actually watching this as a live feed like somebody's really recording this like it i had to keep reminding myself like all right man chill out all right you got something so because I got some more to add too. No, definitely. Um, I agree with you know all of what y'all are saying. Um, you know, my my view on it was the same, you know, it was a lot of gems in it, um, a lot of food for thought, you know. Um, I do like there that they are introducing, you know, uh this to the younger generation. But you know, to add to that, um, you know, I, I think these type of films are the future um, in my opinion 
Um, you know, with all this technology we got at our fingertips right now, it's like you don't really need the big uh, production companies anymore to get a good, you know, film or body of work out anymore. You know what I'm saying? And I felt they, they really displayed that uh, with this joint. And, you know, like LaMail mentioned in pre-production, they have another film out. Um, what What is it? Ava, Ava story uh, where they're covering uh, basically the uh, Holocaust uh in uh world war two i believe so yeah it's like you know bringing it you know presenting something like this to people i can see this being in the in the vrs and oculus you know uh this style of presentation um, no, i was gonna that add to what you i was gonna add to what you're saying with that zo uh with this being like the new style and not having uh the the uh the use for like a big production studio as yeah. as much to get a a body of work presented to everybody uh and then also with the generation of nfts and things like that you can still have your product financed uh and and, and put onto a platform that is generating a large enough audience at very low cost to you you know what i'm saying so i think that's a brilliant point you're making uh if you're done i got a couple other points though. Go ahead. well um i was just saying like this is interesting because like there's a um, there's an NFT I think it's called like Stoner Cat or some shit like that. You got Chris Rock on it, Mo, uh, Mila Kunis, and yeah. a few other big names. That that was the first time I heard about like I before you even brought this to me or to the group or whatever. Um, but it basically is an NFT, and the only place you could see it is through purchasing the NFT. So the value is directly associated with the views, right? Mm-hmm um and so it's interesting that you then this mo this story came across our our real house or our our conference table or whatever and it's an interesting like hell no and i was like hell no um <laughs> no no i'm just like like you have to understand there's like a i got a i got a trauma limit and yeah. i'm very black and white like i'm a very linear thinker so for all, I could be, I, it sounds to me based on how you guys are talking about this story, I'm 100% wrong in my perception of it. But you have to understand, like, I don't do double takes. And so for me. Well, well, I think, I think what you missed in, in, in uh, in, in just reading the cover. Yeah. So to speak, uh, was that in LaMail's take, how it was done in like a live feed version from a child's perspective. And so you're getting uh you have adult knowledge of the trauma as far as how you read it so when you're getting it from a child's perspective the the, the spin that they putting on what's happening to them is completely you know what i'm saying different no, and, I, I hear and, and uh viewing it through that lens it gives it i guess it's still graphic but it gives it takes some of the graphic i'm away. an emotional sponge Mm -hmm. I absorb mm -hmm. energy. I absorb that shit. I bring that shit. You see what I'm saying? So for me, when I see the like, and again, it, it's a, it was a snap judgment on, because I literally yeah. just went, saw the first story and was like, not today, can't do it, and it was a snap judgment. But I just was it the drums? It wasn't the drums. It was the spears. It was the spears. It was, like I didn't mind the drums because I got with the beat. But like it was you gonna fall in with it, man? Come on, come on, Jay. You gotta laugh through the trauma. But like I, the business side of it, the the aspect side of it, I will not argue is interesting because at first I was thinking like, what's to keep my attention? Because if it's a story, I'll easily x out and leave. Mm -hmm. You throw in the Oculus and the VR and the Meta World <laughs> and that aspect of it, it's less likely that I'm gonna, when I'm submerged now inside this environment, like it's going to be a different <laughs> idea for me to leave. Well, there, but, there uh, is a science, you know what I'm saying, to this because, you know, most people, uh, well, most companies or, you know, who's ever putting these things together, um, they're looking for their core fans. So mm -hmm. it's like if you if you leave, you know, it's not for you. But right. the ones that stay, you know, they find their their first, you know, thousand, five thousand, ten thousand fans that they can continue to give this content to. And, you know, as uh, 
the content provider is growing, you know, the fan base is growing. They're making money right away versus waiting to get their big break. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think the page itself, I think the page itself has over 100K followers right now. Yeah, and and growing. And growing because they're just starting uh, to make rounds as as far as the the going back to like that. My bad, go ahead. You good? You good? No, uh, and going back to what what Zay, uh, uh, Zoe and Jay was saying, that's why I put y'all together. (laughs) (laughs) Going back to Zay, going back to Zay, (laughs) what they had to say together, the Oculus and the uh, the first person, yeah, uh, viewing of the film, it kind of takes. And, and and adding what Lamille said, it kind of takes the uh the feeling of a directed film being given to you, and it makes it more like you know first person. Mm-hmm. And I could see this like if you had a VR headset, you turn one way, you see in different huts and all this other stuff. Uh, that would be hard. That would be that would be extremely Dang, raw ass game too. Yeah, but I yeah. did. I wanted I wanted to piggyback off that what uh, Jay was saying um too. Um, it holds your attention mm-hmm. only because I hate when Lamel try to be serious. His voice changes shit. This it does. Cool. No, it does. It sounds like a guy hey, that's bullshit. like I hey, used to, I used to smoke bullshit, the marijuana. Man. I used to smoke the marijuana too back in the I day. I used to. I used and to. And now I look at my life. You want to right mess with my gig? I got a nice gig right now. Until yeah. y'all start supporting us at the True View Podcast.com where you can like, subscribe, share, and comment and make oh, this my official. Man, he try to get serious, dog. <laughs> no man but i was saying uh you know how i always say how everybody has short attention spans now uh them doing it through these stories they were quick bites very quick bites and then you jump to a different scene quick bites, then you jump to a different like i didn't have time to get bored with it like i was just like dang okay on to oh man okay wait a minute no this real happened. shit lamel i watched part of this during uh during my break and it was like when I got back to it, I knew exactly where I was at. Yeah. I was ready to hop back in. I'm talking about I hop back in in the middle of one of the numbers in the story because yeah. it was the stories were numbered. I hopped, I left off in the middle of one of the stories and I came back and hopped right back to the scene I was at and kept with the joint. Just and right it was, like you ain't miss a beat. It, it was, it was the story, was. the storytelling was done very well. Uh, if I had one knock on it, I'd just say the costuming was too clean. Like you, know, it was. It made. It was. It made. Some it made me feel like they tight. was in Florida or something. You know what I'm saying? No, some people had that tight line in there. I was like, come on, bro. Yeah, like, y'all got to it up. Yeah. Like these mugs is on Tyler Perry joint, dog. They had the plate <laughs> on your boy. Like them lines was looking sharp. I was like, come on, man. <laughs> but no, nah, man, it was it was short bites. Um. The content was good. Like they gave you enough to where they jumped around from. There was a, a you know how on Instagram where you can do the the bounce pictures like with the yeah, loops boomerang, and stuff. The boomerang. Yeah, they do the boomerang with the words. <laughs> Jesus Christ! So we did this. a loop. We a yeah. <laughs> they, they were keeping us in the loop, Jay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the boomerang. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, my, wife, my wife, get, yeah. my wife, my wife edits my videos. If y'all look at my Instagram, my wife be helping me edit my videos and my kids. So I don't be knowing them. But anyway, <laughs> but they they mixed it up enough to where they gave you content, they gave you the boomerangs, and then they gave you uh, just stuff uh, like a page for you to read, giving you a background into either the previous scene or the scene coming forth. So they, mixed it up. yeah, feel so they they mixed it up enough to where. You now wasn't. You knew you, say, you knew you were still on that platform. Now, right. what I will say is that shit looked crisp as fuck. It, oh, it was, it was clean. clean. It was. Oh yeah, they clean. had the they had the iPhone thirteen. That, that was the eight K camera, bro. Like I don't know yeah. if they make them, but they found them. Son, no. Nah, who, who got I the best phone with the uh with the is Samsung. that the Google Pixel? Samsung. Yeah, I think it's Samsung. Oh, I thought it was Samsung. Oh, I thought yeah, it was I a Google Samsung. Pixel. Joint. Samsung has like, the best or it could be Google. I don't know, but I know. I think that Pixel joint got the best camera. It's made yeah. for the best Tesla camera. to the moon. What? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Tesla's about to die. Lucid is going to take. What are we doing? Moving on. All right. Um, all right. Let's. Shibu. All right. <laughs> Satoshi. I don't know. What the fuck? Um, Satoshi. Yes. Satoshi. All right. Back to it. Let's get back to it. Oh, so now the presentation this, was clean. So 
Yeah. So the presentation was beautiful. And I get I guess like that seems interesting, right? Because y'all remember money and violence back in the day? That shit was dope. That shit was dope. <laughs> and I think like they the fucked YouTube up. Joint. It was a YouTube joint that like first hand camera, like uh, gorilla respect life. Who wait what? Damn, you it's, that's another one. Respect life. Oh anyway. no, I didn't see that. No, no, no. I, I saw money and violence because it was in Brooklyn. <laughs> Jay bro. thought you was dropping the this gym was some New York shit. This was some New York respect shit. Respect life too. Yeah, oh, okay. check that out. Check okay, that I'll check out. it out. But um, but yeah, no, I was like, I was fully obsessed with that shit, and I remember being annoyed because it was like. The YouTube, once it started getting, YouTube started throwing ads into the algorithm. <laughs> so, like, the further yeah. along the episodes you got is, like, the longer the episodes got. Because every five seconds, there's, like, can't skip in five seconds, can't skip. And it's, like, what the fuck is going on? You just got to come out their pocket a little more, get that premium. <laughs> the YouTube red. Basically, right? <laughs> so now, but with, did with you know, Instagram, did you know, real quick, did you know that? The content provider gets paid from those ad views too. Yes, the cheapest, yeah. the lowest rate though. It don't That's matter, the, man. Them shit, the, them shit, them motherfuckers out here getting five, yeah. ten bands a watt off them ads, bro. Oh damn! Well, we got to talk about the different, <laughs> the different levels of cheap because they made the sound <laughs> like, like Jason, somebody say what? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> no, but like the way I hear content creators complaining about the YouTube pay scale, it seems as if like they're getting peanuts. Like that's it may just take like ten all these years to get out here complaining 000. that they broke. That's rich people broke. Yeah, it's that's different. rich. That, I gotta just I gotta remember broke rich people broke is totally we're not, a, we're not the same. We are <laughs> not the same. No, but for this, like I know you could put ads in in reels. But not, I don't know that you could do it in stories. So I go back to like, it's very interesting. They chose, I don't think you can in stories either. You see so the ad you put it after in between you the see, story. Yeah, after you right. see the story. Yeah. But that was in, the, I mean, like I watched like the first one and there was no, like the first story and there was no ad. And it was like, I didn't get okay. one ad through the whole thing. Yeah, okay, no, so that's where I was going with it. Thanks for speeding that up. Yeah, I didn't either. So why not go with a reel versus a, a story? Because wouldn't that bring more attention to it? But think, that's the thing. You want to you reaching children. You don't want them having to deal with no ads. You want to be right straight to the point. That's where the kids are at in yeah. stories. I was going to say, too, with that, with the ad, <coughs> you're giving room to lose your audience. What do you mean by that? You're giving them a time like to you don't with these stories the way these stories are they're hitting you one after right. another right if you add in an ad you just lost some attention oh yeah because the second i see the ad i i you, you yeah, know you what skip. you're absolutely yeah i'm 100 i not even skip i close the story and i just start scrolling through the explorer page <laughs> shout out to the explorer page hey um no <laughs> that is totally inappropriate i apologize oh my god um, I mean, I think that's interesting, but like this goes back to. <sighs> so, we, you guys were toting this as the future, the displaying yes. content as this is the future, and I don't necessarily think. Are you thinking like as when you say the future, you think like replacing DSPs or replacing movies? Because we saw DSPs, I think, killed the movie studio, right? No, then, not necessarily. Oh, like, I don't really. Oh, theaters, okay. Yeah, movie theaters are still, you just got to be a big box office movie. Like, you got to be something that everybody wants to see yeah. uh, outside the com comfort of their own home. Right. Like, they want to venture out. Right? Yeah. So, it, it's not necessarily dead, but it did change the way people are shooting movies, which I think this is going to change the way people are shooting movies. Because it's but cutting we, out. We saw the first camera angle with Hardcore Harry. We've seen Gorilla filmed. Well, I, I think it's less about the the uh the the first camera angle and more about reaching your, your yeah getting your work out and reaching the mm. audience and, and, and being able to yeah. I think it's all of that was the empowering part of the uh the creative process here yeah it's putting it's, it's putting more of the power in the creative's hand over uh a production's hand okay the independence okay. all the way yeah. 
or at least that's what it's it feels like because yeah. they, I feel like Instagram some somehow has the money or some their fingers in this, right? You got different faces. Nah. Nah. <laughs> nah. Instagram, Instagram nah, just, ain't got nothing. They to benefit do. from it. They benefit yeah. from it. So. Really? Yeah. I'm mm. sure they're gonna toss them a bag though, because they I mean probably not. And man, I, wouldn't keep it, I would keep the you would want to keep these series coming on this thing. Is there a danger in the fact that something like this is not censored, right? Because it, if well, it, 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 I don't think it needs to be censored. It does yeah. give you disclaimers throughout the uh, series that the content that you're about to see yeah. is, yeah. you know, can be sensitive to those who you know find like, this, like this you guys subject saying, matter sensitive. But mm -hmm. like you guys are saying, like this is is supposed to go to towards kids, right? Like. You want to get well, the kids learned about this information and know about these characters, obviously, because they're not being taught in schools, which that's an American thing. Like, I, I honestly feel like this whole, when you when you say critical race theory to an immigrant, they're fucking lost because the idea of not telling the full story is american it's, i don't know yeah. what that looks like bro. <laughs> right it don't it don't seem it don't seem like it should be right yeah it's, it's, it, it's, it's, it seems it's, illogical right exactly it, yeah <laughs> that's the american way the fact that we're having a fight <laughs> and an argument over do we want to tell the truth or not landing? do we want to explain well the, i think the, the fight is not necessarily over over telling the truth or not is is it's over who's who's whose feelings truth are we, whose truth are we deciding on more so but okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so 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 to go back to what I'm saying is like to tell that to me is just like of course you're gonna tell the whole shit. Like I need to know how we got here. Like <laughs> I need explain this to me, right? Um, so it's like something like this, any kid can pick it up, right? Any uh, right, like wouldn't that isn't there a fear of that, like a kid being exposed to certain things? I don't know. Soon? I don't know. Let's let's ask this question, ask this question. Lamel, Zoe, do you have a problem with? Would you have a problem with your children watching this? Mia, Destiny, nah, I'm gonna watch. Yeah. I was okay. Gonna say so, Zoe, what's your youngest daughter's name? Zoe. Zoe, she gonna watch this? Yeah. Isn't she like eight? It's, it's done from a perspective of like an eleven-year-old, bro. Yeah, but then isn't there a trauma involved in that? Baby? Like. Oh. Like, that's what I'm trying to understand. Here. No, see, I say this, this, like, that's what I'm trying this to understand. The thing, like, Jay, this the thing. I'm not saying shelter your child or hide. No, but, but like, but in most black Jay, families, Jay. Yeah. You, Go you're ahead, going, Zoe. in most black families, you're going to um, give I'm your sure kids I'm this right. information, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. to know where they come from, you know what I'm saying, even though they didn't witness any of this shit. Mm -hmm. But to know their lineage, you know what I'm saying, to what these people out here covering up. Yeah. Okay. That's why I do it. You know so because so you here's have... my thing, right? The... But wait, hold on. Well, I was just, just gonna I was just gonna add this on there too. Oh, God damn uh, <laughs> there is, I mean the conversation got good, nigga. <laughs> no, I was gonna say there is there is no hold back on trauma. These kids live live through trauma right now. These Zoe and Lamel's kids have lived through George Floyd. What are you talking about? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna say correct. Yeah, I, no, I was gonna, like, like, I was just gonna say like we have to teach them, uh, like we have to tell them these things so they know how we grew up moving, so that they know that this stuff is out here. And even though they're trying to, you know, make it look different, it's still the same old shit. You're gonna have to continue to move and look over your shoulder. And you know, keep your eyes peeled out for this, that. When you see right. this, you know you have to react this way. And this, when you see it, so you know. Like even if it, I hope, I hope and pray that they never they have still to bad you. guys with the large sacks out here. That's yeah, take your ass away. Yeah, I, like I pray to God they never experience it, but I do want them to be prepared just in case they do. It's, it's like that that proverb: in times of peace, you stay ready for war. Um. Damn, I've never heard that, but that's that's cold. I so guess ready, you don't have to get ready. I guess for me, like it's from a. I've always used to say like Caribbeans and immigrants grow f like at least two years faster than the average American, if not maybe even ten, faster than the average American, right? And part of that is the fact that like, for example, in schools, 
we may not have had a school built like in Jamaica, they haven't built a new school in like 40 years or whatever, but the education is still being taught. It's just in shitty facilities. Right. Mm -hmm. And with that, you are technically ahead. Like if you go to like, say, if you come from St. Kitts or any of the Dutch Island, like Belize and shit, you are at least two to three grades ahead of, ahead of an American student. Meaning what an American student is learning in seventh grade, you learned in fifth or fourth. So your ability to process things and take things in is is a little bit more advanced from a child. So that's where I go back to is like, when you expose your kids to this, are they able to fully, how do you make them grasp it well, I, without I got a little pushback. it being trauma? Okay, okay so no, nah, hit me. Like, so I'm talking about shit from how, how do you how do you how do you look at you know what I'm saying a kid uh a, a, a everyday kid from the hood or the ghetto they may not be getting the you know what I'm saying knowledge that fast but, but they're seeing the their lives state. experience yeah it's like they had to grow up faster than most mm -hmm. children right well it's your your average the average American that you're comparing us to or comparing like not Making us that, cover, that, that comparison yeah. with, right. that, that you're comparing to is a like i guess a cookie cutter uh follow all of the rules in school no street smarts yeah. so when you're comparing to an average black person uh even those that might not look well on paper in school they're still extremely smart and can survive in damn near anything because of what they learn outside of school. Cause uh, a lot of Americans, especially a lot of black Americans look at the education system as they're just, they don't train you on what you need to survive in life. They train you for what you need to fall in line with what they want you to do. Mm. Yeah, a no, lot of the stuff that we, that we've learned. Oh, go ahead, Mike. I was going to say it's common. Well, I would say it's common where I'm from that the, the school system is training you for either a to factory job back. or the jail. You know what I'm saying? The same bills is in both places. Jesus same Christ. hallways is in both places. God damn it. Right. Same, same <laughs> rule for authority is in both places. And that's just what it is. The school system not is it's not train it's training you to take an order and regurgitate information. You know what I'm saying? You're just repeating information that you taking in. You say that a lot nicer than I do because I say the school system train you to be the monkey so you can monkey see monkey do. Hey, don't call me a monkey. Um <laughs> <laughs> that shit hurt, don't it? That shit cut yeah, through, don't, don't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't like that one. Uh, that the system one call you that monkey see monkey do. Can you do this? Yeah, okay, you get an eight. Okay, and I mean, like, I I will say Zoe's Zoe's example of like the, the it don't it don't teach you how to think; it teach you what to think. Yeah, so, yeah. And I guess that's that's where the things kind of change because even with me, I I may have been a little bit more open minded, but I have like a very linear thinking, right? So it's like you one got a right after the other. Part. Yeah, you got to have a one. Yeah, I have a one that right after the other. So for me, I just kind of like decide, make a move, and then go for it. Um, whereas, like a lot of this, a lot of this conversation, depending on the age of your child, you there's you can't just take it as black and white. There needs to be an understanding because you can't have your child. Well, I think that's where linear thinking has conflict with this type of subject. Yeah, now. that's where I'm and, against and, my uh, <laughs> and. Uh, I think that's where I I kind of grasp it differently because my my thinking is more on a I guess more on a 360 I guess mm -hmm. a circular format and uh, where I can encompass you know this happens to that that happens to this and it draws you more so say this is the reason this is the reason this is the reason this is the reason when there's a multitude of reasons that collapse in on 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 certain things all right so i'm speaking in general not necessarily yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. no i understand that con i understand the concept but that's where i go like i need to know how we got from here to here like my linear thinking is how i get the entire story right because right. i can't move forward if i don't know how i got to this point like i i'm See. stuck there right 
and I feel See, like but my but, but the circular thinking I think is more like the uh the 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 rolling ball of snow down the hill where you kind of gather and build up and, and, and gather as you and go and yeah. yeah and that's yeah. how I get it you see yeah. what I'm saying no, either way we get the information we get to the point it's just a, who works a little bit more harder it sounds like I'm going up the hill and you just taking the shit as yeah you your shit out. look like the uh <laughs> your shit look like the detective clipboard with all yep. the damn webs on it <laughs> 100 that's literally my brain on a daily basis um <laughs> man you should look like the <laughs> price is white wheel the wow. price is white he shocked himself he said wow <laughs> no that was a good one yeah, let's take that, that back any point any point any point any point, any point. Uh, uh, good one, man. Nah, uh, just... mm-hmm. he said i saw that <laughs> oh that's funny <laughs> I think that is interesting. I mean, showing it from the kids' eyes is weird because we were talking about other. It's not weird, bro. It's, it's so not. Weird. It's hard, bro. Like, it's you, not. Can I like, tell you? That's too much for that's people the to thing, absorb. That's like, the thing that kept getting me because I'm thinking about it. Because I mean, I knew, I knew the sto- like I know the outcome already. It but was the, bringing that story to a current modern time. Yes. Have we ever? Has this story ever been told from a child? Like? It has now. Shit. I mean, we've seen grab like be a first. I, I, Maybe well, no. or something. Shit, I don't know. Hard, bro. <laughs> that, I mean, that hit hard, bro. Teenage with um Kunta Kente type shit. What was that? Like that he was probably like a teenager though. No, man, not like was, this. That was that was like a child. Like that's my shit though. It's like like this story. I'm too new of a father to be able to like not hold on to this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I can see that, but it's just it? definitely necessary. I still feel All right, like so this let's story. let's talk about the story. Y'all gotta sell me. Why why do you think this okay? I'm the guy on the fence. I'm the you know, I'm not whitewashed, but I, I'm I not one I got a key point for for what you're saying. Hey, oh, man. before we go there or with it? Like no. something else for the presentation, you mean? Drop bowls on them, so not a story okay so let me just say i'm like i'm not whitewashed i'm not militant right I'm, it's jay why is this <laughs> I mean, that's me right <laughs> why is this a story only imagine that i'm american but why is this a story that's that needs to be experienced see jay, jay what you just said is uh there's a slider to that scale now <laughs> you gotta be old, you know. Say you're not dead in the middle now. There's a no, I'm dead in the middle. Man. I'm dead. Uh, in the middle. You know, what I'm saying on the yeah. treble, you, you you probably on the on the plus four type of side on the white. Way. You know, what I'm saying on the <laughs> disrespect. No, no fuck that nigga. You told me I was the price of right wheel. Oh, no, he said the price is white. Right. Look at you, the price is white. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you held on to oh that. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, you getting it now? It's, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but for real though, because I'm. Cause I don't feel I don't feel I'm whitewashed or I don't feel I'm militant either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's my thing. It's like I just look live life and judge everything because I come from a country where our national motto on our coat of arms says "Out of many, one people." We were an island of beyond slaves, just full on fucking rebels. Spain used us as a full on prison. That was a bad idea during slavery because yeah, guess what they're gonna do? <laughs> Murder you, motherfuckers! Like it's just not in my nature it's not i'm from an island where it's not in our nature to withstand and this is gonna sound fucked up right but hear me out and y'all know my heart like y'all know my heart but it's, that's why i'm asking for this shit to be explained it's not in my nature for in my country's nature to withstand like this level of open oppression economic oh, oppression oh. 
like with how well, Americans well, open speak. brutality and all yeah, that like stuff. Towards, just but because see, of the CJ, right that's why I think you need to experience the story because there were your people on that boat too. You see yeah. what I'm saying? It's just that and we got were, dropped off first, like right, right, yeah. It was it was all of that, and you got to think you guys were on the island deciding these things. There was a whole, you said it was spread across a larger yeah. space. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Like Jamaica could probably fit in California, and <laughs> Jamaica could fit in Atlanta. Goddamn, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. This this is a point I want to make too. You got one more of them bitches, bro. You said Atlanta. You said Atlanta. You gonna stop disrespecting my little island? Feel the rhythm, feel the ride, nigga. I'm just telling you. Pause. Go ahead, Joe. So you know, to experience this from a child's perspective, uh, when it when it comes to this trauma that we're speaking of, most children only know that okay. There were these white folks that came and, you know what I'm saying, took these folks from their land and conquered their land. But what most of them don't know is nine times out of ten, you were set up by your own folks mm-hmm. and given to these people. And, they and I think that was one of the most key, you know what I'm saying, factors of the story for story? me. Yeah. They told that, and that was so beautiful. Like you see the mom, like get away from them. Do not talk to those people. Do not. And you knew what was gonna happen when he kept talking to them people. You like, God, get your ass away from the goddamn people. And they were so yeah. like, ah, ha, ha, ha. <clears throat> like they like it was, man, dude. It was such. You gotta go back and watch it, Jay. You gotta go back and watch it, man. Definitely. Like just experience. Like the the story was so complete. They told oh, from the God, innocence of a child's eye. Like, from the innocence Whoa. of a child's eye. I think. Child's I think what you. Oh, go ahead. go ahead, go ahead, man. No, I was just saying from the innocence of a child's eye, you're looking at such a traumatic experience. But the way he's seeing it is completely. It's a different take on how we it. normally get it in the books. Okay. Like it, it humanized it a lot. Uh, like as far as Shit. you get to see uh, how they're they're in these chains. Because you hear a lot of people say, "Man, if I was in them chains, I do this, that, and the other." You see them in the chains, and you get to like through this child's right. eyes, you see them reacting and making a plan. Like, all right, man, we got to do this before this ship fill up. Like, we got like we only get a this small window of time because once this ship fill up. Like they gonna take us on the scene, like we they, we gonna be out, man, and to, to watch them come up with that. And see, okay, so so where does this story sit next to um, Kanye saying slavery was a choice? Oh we'll see. Uh, this story if that if you, if it has the if it tells the side of like your own people selling you into it. Right? Well, it, and that's it, what, it show, I don't want to make it seem like I'm just taking shots. Wait, hold on, Jay. No, no, it just shows the difference in mentalities that we had during those times uh, versus what we have established here with the teachings living in this system. Because it's a different teaching. It's a different whole structure of way of life, period. Mm-hmm. Uh, because instead of them saying hey they had a plan they actually got free we gonna go get a boat and come back instead of saying i'm gonna unchain every one of us yeah and we gonna slay these mugs next and take the boat Mm -hmm. it's a different mentality that they had i see that whole mentality i got was something that i probably established with my development here in this land you see what i'm saying yeah uh because they unchained themselves and ran off the boat to go get a boat and And while they were doing that the other ones that were chained up was cheering them on like go was chanting and doing all this other stuff and it it, it, bro it broke my heart bro i ain't gonna lie it made me look at a lot of a lot of stuff in today's time and i'm not even finna go down that path yeah i Uh, thought about it mike i'm with you i was in there yeah so i'm like bro yeah yeah, bro. So it, it's like it left a disgust with me. But uh, what you what you what you don't get out of most other stories is how telling this story empowered this person. 
Mm. And I think that's uh, something that in the Equiano, uh, from Equiano that we get at the end, that explains why you had to sit through uh, him telling this story and why he wrote his uh, book, including his story. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the only books to include uh, what life was like in that time period in his homeland. He documents that in this story as well. And he uses this story to, like you said in the beginning, become an abolitionist mm -hmm. and abolish slavery in Europe. And I do want to point out, he was the first, he was like the, the king, the father of crowdsourcing. Because once he yeah. got free, he freed yeah. himself, like I think they said around like 20, 20, somewhere. He was like in his 20s when he freed himself. Like he, learned, he learned to trade and freed himself, yeah. Yeah, so uh in doing all of that, he he gained so many different uh uh like not like uh helpers, people people to help him out. Uh he went back and asked them to donate to help him get this book out. Like he wrote the book, he's like, Look, I need I need help with the publishing, this, that, and the other, and he built such good uh relationships with this with these people that they're like yeah man yeah go ahead they gave him the money he crowdsourced it and got the got the book out and used like this book has been used uh to help you know abolish slavery hmm. so yeah i think earlier someone was saying it's come up it was one of the handbooks on like how to walk away or how, what happens when you get away from slavery or how to free people or whatever not or whatever why am i like this Whoa. um <laughs> no i mean there's two things that are sticking out for me that i think are interesting right there's the the duplicitous nature of our own people where the same people that are here that are facing the same traumas that you are are going to be the same one that will sell you into that trauma or push you into that trauma which is what i got from zoe and then from Mike, I'm getting this is what the anti crabs in the barrel is supposed to look like, right? And it shows that there was a time where that didn't exist. That 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 need for us to be competitive against our own and even at our own detriment didn't exist. It was you know literally bring my brother with me right, type shit. So I hear those stories, and I think that's. That's good, but let me ask you this. Did you guys leave with feeling anything emotionally on you? Like, or any kind of added stress from having to take this all in from, a, and again, from a fucking child, bro. Like, I think that's the hard part for me. Cause I'm looking at homie's eyes right now and like, that's gonna hurt <clears throat> to watch. Oh no, homie was having fun filming this. This nigga was on titties and everything. <laughs> Okay, no, uh, no, 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 he was having fun filming this, man. Tell me I'm lying, dog. He was having a blast filming this. I was having a blast with him, bro. I was like, dog, this nigga's in, into the mix. Uh, yeah. But him and just explaining customs and all that stuff, it made me want to find this book, quite honestly. It more did, than anything. yes. Uh, and, uh, I think that was just I think it was just a uh, a story just of empowering your your struggle and using it for your people. Mm. Cuz yeah, they and did that's something they that's a, lost. They gave him that token uh within one there's many. So he had a token from his tribe that it carried all of the spirit of the of his tribe and and he just kept that one token throughout this whole journey and stuff man and that was powerful like up uh, from one there's many like yeah i mean that's, that's deep bro <laughs> that shit was deep man um <clears throat> it was deep and it still had the uh the texture for uh child to the child to absorb mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I think too also it's like um, the way the story was written and the way uh, it concluded. You know, um, 
showing the child that, you know, you can, you know, escape anything, you know what I'm saying, you bound to, you know what I'm saying? Um, just him having some success after all of that trauma was dope too. What did you say the token said? I believe uh, from it wasn't no token. It was uh, what they call them, the Dibby. Yeah, I think it was a Dibby. Yeah, yeah. And it was he was like he was like the shaman or the uh, spiritual doctor or other other the, the village. Yeah. He gave him. It was like a. It was like a little cutout of a uh, human. It was like a little yeah of a person almost, but it was like a rock almost or something like that, stone or something like that, and it had like markings on it. And he said that it held his mother, his father, his sister, his people from his village, all was held in there. His ancestors as well. Hmm. So he had to protect that. He said, "Keep it close to you at all times." Okay, because the way Mel said, because he because in the in the earlier part of the series. It was a snake that crawled near him and didn't bite him. So they mm-hmm. felt that was a sign. And he had to go see the Dibby because of that. Yeah, because the snake, the snake didn't bite him. It was like something. But you need to check it out to see. I mean, this is yeah. part of who, no. who uh you know they say we all come from or well, I mean, like we all are I, I don't too. I don't remember any exact phrasing, but it made me say, it sounded like the Jamaican national at motto where it was like out of many one people. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, so, I don't, so it, it there's a lot of correlations that I'm that should draw me to this, and maybe it's a little embarrassing that I didn't watch it. But like I said, like I have a very you got a natural response. Like this, what does that mean? When you've said that like three times, it's a no, natural. We're not therapizing me this episode. I was gonna Let's say this. <laughs> See, that's a natural trauma <laughs> response, right? No. <laughs> no, yeah, that's no, it's a See? shutdown. <laughs> um, who created this? Uh, like, whose idea was it to get this story out? What white man? This was uh this put out <laughs> by. No, this it's was a, put out by Dusabu Museum, Stellar Stories Film Studios, and uh, one of the creators was uh Yvonne. Yeah. Uh. Uh, damn, how you say that name? Uh, Bonifo. See, see, on the Bonifo. Yeah, the spice of ain't sounding so it's bad B. now, huh? It's B. No, it's Bonifo. That's how you say that. The M is silent. You were right. old reading ass nigga, weren't you? Is that yeah. wrong? Like, what? Man? Discussing a slave, a movie, a slave story, and then condemning him for reading. Yeah. I feel like that was a bad time. Bad. <laughs> what the, what's happening here? I almost made a, a bad joke on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to call me a house nigga, weren't you? You nah, definitely were going to. Way too dark. Oh, <laughs> damn. I know. I know. Yeah, that's why like I trip people up, right? Because I, uh, I know. Yeah. Um. Damn, my lips turning black. I gotta stop. Whoa. Gotta no, stop you was that Gustav dude who's on the boat though. Damn. I feel like I should be disrespected. I feel disrespected. I mean, you gotta check the you gotta check the story out. It's not a bad thing. He showed him a lot of game. He did. He said, I've been on here since I was a little kid, like, and that that was another thing too. I was like, damn, how long? Did it take them to fill up a boat? That's crazy. Well, no, he had well, been on the trip already. Man. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, damn. Damn. Double right trips there. already, man. It was Back like, this- hey, I was, hey, I, I'm not gonna lie, Mike. I was like, damn, man, they must be faster than what I thought they was. They they couldn't fill up a boat. Like, God, dog. So I wish there was. Did you guys find any? No, 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 no. Because y'all you are already not, left. No, you already left. No, no. You already left. I left, left, but y'all are not gonna let that motherfucker fly, like fly on that shit. Like, so we just gonna let that shit go? Like he didn't just. I he said, "I guess they were all as fast as I thought they were," because <laughs> they couldn't fill up a boat. You know, Kenyans in the running. I get it. Yeah. So, yeah. so we just gonna let that. So he gets to make a joke like that, but me making found a reading is just is the wrong time. You you the only one that pointed this stuff out, Jay. You the only one offended by it, bro. I'm not offended. <laughs> by it, bro. 
I'm not sure what angle to take with you, Mike. Like, I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get offended easy, man. This shit, this shit is all. So that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. did you take? Did this affect you in your day to day when you finish watching this? When you guys no, I mean this is history. I, I understood already. I've been to the Dusabu Museum, so uh, if you've been in the Dusabu Museum, there's a lot of uh, of artifacts that you know explain the, the the history of slavery in this land and coming to this land. There's a lot of uh, uh Zo. Yo. Did you get Did you get the right angle, sir? Yeah. Good yeah. summer. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just asking. We just want to make sure that you got the angle. Right? Like, it's gonna be a running thing. Like, how yeah. so did you uh, did you get the text sent, dog? Did, it... <laughs> did she leave you on red? Like, the, did the bubbles pop up or like? I don't know what y'all talking about. Man. <laughs> you know what I love, yo? If I ever do anything illegal, God, I'm God. So, I'm. Uh, <laughs> Hey, <laughs> I do not know none of what he's talking about. Oh, these allegations. This nigga is gonna be like, "Who got a car? What car?" <laughs> wow, he got a car. Like, <laughs> like this one, oh, queen. Oh, take it. What's your name? Ju, like, Ju. What's your first name? Jew. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> <laughs> 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 hey. hey. <laughs> Grab that rice out the microwave. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta go. I can't. Holy shit. Holy shit. Come oh back. Come God, back. Come man. back. I'm sorry. All right. All right. Let's oh get back on, back on track. Let's try. Nigga chewing ice on the mic and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. Man. No, yeah, shout yeah. out to the creators and everything. Yeah, we're um, talking about the, the creators. <sighs> now we were talking about what this story meant to you and how yeah, it affected sorry. you. Yeah. yeah, that's uh, what I'm saying. I was, like, gonna, I was gonna say, like I said, I've been to the Saudi <laughs> Museum. I'm I'm well in touch with a lot of this history. Uh it always interests me. That's why I don't have a problem watching this type of uh uh content. Uh and I always come away with a different, you know, layer of thought on, on on the situation or on the subject matter uh of our history or slavery or how you want to document it mm-hmm. uh or or our uh tribulations in this land if you want to say man okay. no, I'm, I'm i'm about with them i have been to the dusabo museum but realized that i have never taken my children there so that is uh actually one thing that i need to would step you take up. your wife oh yeah oh definitely um, I mean, with with her being with me, it's you know, uh, part of her history too. It's part of her history. Like this is you live here, shit. We got to bring these kids up in this. Like you need to understand the struggle and the way the reasons why so, I, move, I move. So, do you see uh, slavery as a separate part of American history, or do you see it as uh? A separate part you, you think his own segment of history jay how do you look i think, at it? I'm not I, think sure. I look at slavery as part of world history and i think world like, history world yeah history, definitely like, yeah i mean technically yeah, yeah slavery so, is worldwide. of course because we've all we've we've all embraced it and we've not take that well, away we've all we we're all in some way connected affected, to yeah. affected by it right i think what makes america unique is everybody else seems embarrassed by it like the world seemed embarrassed by it and made the steps to make sure that when they decided to step away from it, they stepped all the way from it and created an equal plane. Now, for me, my <clears throat> my again, my knowledge or my experience. I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that take when they say when I say equal plane, I mean as far as like we're gonna say we're no longer going to enforce these archaic I got you. is what you're saying. But they've admitted it. No, the yeah, world is. I'm saying like only America, it seems, yeah. that's not. That's like what I'm America's, saying. America's, the rest of the world had an admittance of guilt. They're like, all right. Exactly. That's what I meant by America. America. Like, like, nah, nah, you nah, got nah. us. You got us. As they sit up here with the with the uh, the whitewash, they're like, no, nah, man, ain't nothing going on. That's what I feel like. I feel like America is the only one that's uh-huh. like, that didn't happen or yeah, it wasn't so bad. 
And it's like what they're not understanding is like the rest yeah, of the world. America comes out with shows like The Cleaner. Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, America just I adopted the shaggy mentality. Away. The which one? The shaggy mentality. It's, it wasn't, it wasn't me. me. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. That motherfucking that song, bro. No, but what I'm saying is like they don't understand how like I feel like the Western world didn't then go and create um, you know, voter suppression right laws. Mm-hmm. I feel like the rest of the world didn't go out and then create, you know, Jim Crow and the factor say de facto versus the jury segregation. Like there was systematic steps and intentional and purposeful steps made to they're like, all right, you say we can't call them slaves anymore, but we're going to call them prisoners. Like there were steps made to make sure that blacks and disenfranchised people stayed in this realm where they wanted them, right? As close to slavery as possible. So for me, I look at slavery as a as slavery as a global thing. And then when it comes to when you shrink it down and you bring it to America, I have to, I play dead to see the kind of funeral you're going to give me. And my mom says that's what Farrakhan said, but I've always just taken it from her, right? And what I took from that is basically, as I approach people that look like the people that may have held my people captive, Mm -hmm. I want to hear how you speak. I want to, and I individualize everybody. And that's just kind of how I take that section of history and I'm able to navigate through people because if you just take slavery for what it was as a black and white situation you just hate white people for the rest of your fucking life and then you'll even fucking hate some black people for the rest of your fucking life but no i don't think it's a a separate issue i don't i think it has to go one in the same but america won't admit it and at this point i don't know if there's any value in them admitting it or owning up to it because the posturing they do on the other side makes everything looks trivial as a whole, if that makes any sense. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Like when we when we're talking about critical, like we're over here arguing about critical race theory, and there's still voter suppression rights being voters rights being suppressed. There's still yeah. states where you got people who got just because you got a felony conviction, which counts even if you took a plea deal and we know most people just take the fucking deal because they can't afford anything else you still you don't ever get a right to vote in this in this country but you forever pay taxes right and then they say shit like but we're not gonna call it a master bedroom anymore see we gave y'all some the posthumous should they do it <laughs> but you give them <laughs> oh, like, wow for that I like but, my do, but, you, but do you see where I'm going with it? When you when they do shit like that, it trivial trivializes the topic of slavery because then it makes the rest of the world or the rest of America look at it like, see, all they cared about was just not hearing the word master. Okay, we won't. You're not listening to people. Yeah. And so for me, I'm I I'm so glad I was never born here, bro. Like, I'm so fucking glad, man. Like. I am so glad I wasn't born here. I'm glad I'm here. I'm very happy I'm here. Thank you for the opportunities. Um, but you God, are. thank you, thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. If it makes any, if it makes you feel any better, I I took on all my loans because I refused to take anything meant for African Americans. I didn't want to take from you guys. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I don't know if that if I over answered your question or didn't answer your question. Like, I forgot the goddamn question. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. No, because oh, yeah. you were saying like, do you think <laughs> slavery? <laughs> it's a complicated question. Yeah, no, I was it's like, a complicated. Question. He was saying, like, where do you fit it in into your space as far as uh, how do you connect you right. with the history? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. But God damn, bro. Yeah, man. You was like. And it's like I don't get how you answer the question like that. Like you, you see, you see, you see. You have a very plain view of it, but it then and then it comes down to, oh no, we, that we, they we, they just dropped us off here. They ain't really fuck with us here. <laughs> like no, nigga, you niggas got this shit too, nigga. No, I didn't say that. I, did, I definitely <laughs> didn't say that. 
<laughs> I'm not I'm not saying they wasn't slaves in the in the Caribbean. What I'm saying was there was like in the when it, when you look at country the islands in the Caribbean, it was like yeah, there were slaves, but long after they were slavery, we just had to fight corruption. You guys had to in America, it was everything else. And I, it, yeah, it, right, which makes me feel like slavery leave. lasted longer here. Because they didn't leave. That's why. What do you mean? They what they grabbed over. from you, oh, yeah. they brought over there to That's us. <laughs> they left y'all to do your own shit. You yeah, they definitely they left. They did. They did. Like, the shit I see what you're saying. The shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's too hot over yeah. here. Your oppressors were, were yeah. The veil parts. just got thicker, bro. That's all it was. <laughs> the veil just got thicker, dog. You just couldn't see through it as as much now. It's still on you, and, and you under it just as much. No, that's something I had to learn. The identification of it. That's why. That's why when you see the black dude while in the job, you don't have the same connection. Like, why is he tripping like this? What do you mean? The motherfucking food in the break office was great today why is he having a problem why is darnell having a fucking problem today i like chicken <laughs> everybody loves chicken yeah, yeah i don't think that's fair i don't think that's fair i mean like i just i just I don't get get how you how you i just don't get how you look at it where you can't view uh the content where the content becomes so offensive where it be, becomes like oh, i'm not gonna watch no this. no 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 the no, no, no. Let me get my protest was not of offense. My protest that's, was that's a protect, trauma response. That's a trauma response. Like I just needed to protect my peace. Like when I said earlier that I'm an emotional sponge, this would carry me. Like watching it, like I don't know if what happened to the kid, but watching a kid be captured and taken captive and watching putting a kid in shackles and shit, like that's like when I remember that's gonna take me back to the fucking time the cop arrested the little boy. And the glove and the fucking cuffs didn't fit his wrist. You see what I'm saying? Like it was just slip, slip, kept slipping off. Like I like to me, I live with that. I breathe with that. And I saw that shit and was like, I can't go there. It wasn't a matter of being offended. It was just a matter of like what my mental space can with hand withhold right now. Okay, I get that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry. If you I guess I misunderstood. Yeah. I guess you took it like, man, this shit is going to be some old traumatic, trying to trying to enforce some old traumatic type shit on me. And it's uh, I say, it, it, it didn't help you was like throwing out all of the other yeah. movies and stuff. I was like, nah, that's totally different from that. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like once I saw once I heard that, like I like it, it's just an immediate flashback. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like is. It's understandable. It's just an immediate flashback to where, and I guess in in some people's eyes, it's a cop out. Like this is where I feel like Mel's phrase of like it's a duck in when the head in the sand shit. Oh, the uh, ostrich. Um, yeah, ostrich uh, in the sand shit. Yeah. Like that's where I feel like that's what I'm doing here because I just can't. I just didn't want to do go through that, but it sounds different. It I sounds at the end of the day, you probably made the right response to protect your peace. From first, oh, that's age. important. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. I ain't gonna never front on that. That's important. So, you had anything we're connecting with you at all as far as what you took away from it? Um, or were you just more connected to the creative side of it? No, I, I was connecting on both ends. Um, I kind of really, you know, saying, spilled a lot of both sides out earlier, but you know, saying, just to recap on that, um, definitely the, the, the story, uh, I felt, you know. It hit me from the triumph side, you know what I'm saying? Someone went through something and, you know what I'm saying, he saw, you know, um, light at the end of the tunnel. Um, he saw and, this wasn't the end for him. I did like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And right. it's like, you know, um, that's that's the part, you know, I really want to, you know what I'm saying, put in my children's uh, mind and, you know, show them a different perspective on, you know, this thing that, you know, we speak of as a, a traumatic event, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to our people and our culture. Um, but definitely on a creative aspect, uh, you know, it, it sparked hella ideas, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I, I saw the wheels turning. Yeah, yeah. Um, I could get a bag there, I could get a bag there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, just, you know, just as far as being ahead of the curve, and you know what I'm saying, um, just pioneering something or, you know, helping you know, pioneer something um, that, you know, I consider us all to be creative, you know, 
people don't really have too many outlets uh, to get their art out there. You know what I'm saying? So I feel, you know, something like this can inspire even, you know what I'm saying, a young child. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I thought this device exactly. go the crazy. smallest creator. Yep, yep. yep. The independence of it was the brilliance of it, most so, most definitely. Yeah. Most yeah. Definitely. Okay, Mike uh, Mel, what about you? Man, y'all already you know I love this. I I loved all of this. Um, it it just means a lot, uh, especially coming from a child's perspective. Because thinking back, I don't think we've seen. I can't recall any, at least, if there is. Um, any any storytelling like this from a child's perspective um very smart and creative to put it in the instagram story format to so proud not for not saying instagrams <laughs> so proud of you <laughs> um no it is it, very very smart and creative uh just to connect like i said earlier you're connecting to a, a new audience and you're helping to put this uh, this story out there that needs to be told. Um, yeah, no, it was just, this was brilliant, man. I loved it. I loved emotionally, it. none of you were affected. Oh, emotionally, you continued to with your day. Like, you didn't carry this shit. Um, I didn't, no, I didn't, I didn't carry, carry the negative. Uh, I didn't carry none of the negative because I, I think they shot it in a tasteful form to where they they gave you a glance of what the negativity was, but they didn't bash you over the head with it okay. so it was very tasteful it was very tasteful have you ever been to like a uh a play jay yeah we i mean we've done no no like you gotta understand like i've done we we grew up on pantomime in jamaica you understand so that's all we do like i've been to plays before i've been to the movies matter of fact i've never been to a movie in jamaica i've only been to a play you know what i'm saying so and i've been to places like the Holocaust Museum and I've where there's an entire sh to see the exhibit where they're stepping over where you're literally in the room stepping over the body so it's like but for me it I don't know why but I hold on to that kind of shit that kind of because that pain to me is my callus in some levels yeah. so like, I don't know I don't, I don't I don't know I think to. uh my fascination with history it was was something that was the only thing I could read in high school in all them, my younger years, you know what I'm saying? So reading through them books and reading subject matter outside of that, that connected to those books, uh, it let me know there was a lot of brutality on this planet. And then watching movies Absolutely. and seeing the graphicness of it and being able to relate that into those stories uh, to give it a more of a visual detail I think this stuff, right? I guess I'm desensitized in that manner because I understand it's just what has taken place. Yeah, but you can understand it, bro. But like, it changes how you look at people. Like, you understand? Of like, course. my family, like, it changes everything. Like, I, like, my family says I have the most unforgiving heart ever. And they say I hold on to shit. But, but for me, it's just more of like a, it's more of like, when you see what people can do in the world, first step is admittance, dog. If you know that's what you what you need to work on, and work I, on it. I don't, I don't have that. I just think I'm protected. Um, but moving on, we don't need to do this. We don't need to do this. I think you're not the therapist. Yeah, we're not going down this road. Well, that's something you recognize, dog. Dude. That's something I don't you, think it's a problem. Moving on, it's only like, a problem. Like, you call it a problem. You, Hey, you, you got a likelihood of dying at, at 50 because of some heart failure. you going to eat different through your four, your 20s and 30s if you have Maybe, maybe day. not. Moving on. All day and all the night. Man. That's all I'm saying. I all just day and the say, night. We're not doing this again. We're just moving All forward. day and the night. Y'all go back and y'all listen. No, it wasn't. Hey, we'll think see, you see, see, you see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you yesterday. No, see, see you yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. Y'all um, go back. TruthViewPodcast.com where you can like, subscribe, share, and comment. <laughs> <laughs> all I want to say is, all I want to say is, I hear you guys, and if you can assure me it's not the same bullshit we've been fed. No, it's definitely not. I'll it's give definitely it a not. Shot. I'll give it it's a definitely shot. not. I definitely give it a shot and definitely support. You guys get out there and like it. Uh, we'll end up putting the link for it in the subscription or the subscription in the bio and everything, uh, so you guys can follow along with it, man. But Equiano stories. 
commend you, man. True View Podcast. <laughs> I give it a five, I guess. But you guys could go to trueviewpodcast.com where you can like, subscribe, share, five, comment. Man. Huh? You would have gave us a five? Oh, yeah. I would have gave this a five. What about you, Zo? Yeah. I'm more I'm more in the mid fours, low fours. Mid low fours. Yeah. yeah. I said they, they did a phenomenal job with what uh, with, with man, everything. Just everything. Like I said, I saw it and was like, dog, we need to cover this. <laughs> and I knew I was like, man, how how do I explain? Like it's it's not it's released on Instagram. Yeah, when, when he put something in the chat twice, I'm like, oh okay, there's some shit. Let me see. <laughs> I do believe you put last day of crime in America twice. I'm just saying. Just saying. Wasn't that your pick? No, that no, he put uh a day to die. A day to die yeah, twice. Yeah, I did. Right. A day to die. Yeah, he stood on that one. No, I didn't. Uh, but you man, look, we never cover that. Yeah, anyway, no, we're not gonna yeah, cover nah. that. I'm oh. not I'm not on the pie for that. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, man, trueviewpodcast.com, man. Y'all just, just support the pod, man. We out here growing. We doing our thing, man. Y'all like, subscribe, share, comment, hit that subscribe button. Uh for all everybody following us on YouTube, man. Help get us out there to help that help defeat that all powerful algorithm trying to hold a black pod down. True view podcast. T R U V U E podcast.com. Let's go. Yes, sir. And as always, uh, man, y'all go check out Venti Vibes. So the vibes are always Venti. Find Venti Vibes on Instagram, Facebook, and the website, V-I-N-T-Y, V-I-B-E-Z, dot com. Um, check us out. We got a lot of stuff we're working on. And, man, I'm going to drop it, you know. Venti Vibes over here working on some NFTs. We was talking about NFTs earlier, so be on the lookout for that. Hey. Five NFTs. Let's go. <laughs> You know what we always say, ladies and gentlemen. Go watch. Well, this one's more for me. I need to go watch this shit. So yes, go watch this. <laughs> Thank y'all for listening. True you. True. True. A bunch of different views. <laughs> Your boys keep it real, man. I really like listening to them, man. They funny. Yeah. Son of it. They really speak their truth. What the hell was that? <laughs> you're, you're, you're.